Hello, dear friends, continuing our little study on the names of our wonderful Lord. Hope you're all doing well. Lord Jesus, would you just speak to us today? We need you desperately. You alone have the words of eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, we are going to be looking at um, from Psalm 69, verse 8, where the Lord says, I'm a stranger and an alien. A stranger and an alien. And let's read some of the psalm. Let's read, um, he's a stranger and an alien. Save me, O God, for the waters have come up to my neck. I sink in deep mire. Do you feel like that? Where there is no understanding, I have come into deep waters where the floods overflow me. I am weary with my crying. My throat is dry. My eyes fail while I wait for God. You ever feel like that? Those who hate me without a cause are more than the hairs of my head. They are mighty who would destroy me. Being my enemies wrongfully, though I have stolen nothing, I still must restore it. Oh God, you know my foolishness and my sins are not hidden from you. You know, we're not so innocent either. I think that helps us with a lot of bitterness when we just realize how much damage we've caused in other people's lives. You know, we look at other people, other people, and look what they've done you know what, we have to sometimes look what we've done. Um, we're just not that great either. My sins are not hidden from you. Let not those who wait for you, O Lord, God of hosts, be ashamed because of me. Let not those who seek you be confounded because of me, O God of Israel, because for your sake I have borne reproach. We you know we do all things for Jesus' sake, don't we? We can endure all things because for Jesus' sake. Look what he do endured for us. Look what he endured for us. Okay, um, Psalm 69, verse um, 7. Shame has covered my face. I have, because of you, I have borne reproach. But I have become a stranger to my brothers. This is now the Lord talking. I have become a stranger to my brothers and an alien to my mother's children because zeal for your house has eaten me up and the reproaches of those who reproach you have fallen on me. When I wept and chastened my soul with fasting, that became my reproach. I also made sackcloth my garment. I became a byword to them. Those who sit in the gate speak against me. I am the song of drunkards. Wow. But as for me, my prayer is to you. O oh Lord, in an acceptable time, O oh God, in the multitude of your mercy, hear me in the truth of your salvation. You just picture in the multitude of your mercy. You ever been in a field of wheat or grain or flowers? You're just in a multitude of blessing. You know what? You stand in the multitude of mercies because of the cross. You really do. Deliver me out of the mire and let me not sink. Let me be delivered from those who hate me and out of deep waters. And remember, I always say you're your own worst enemy. You really are because your attitude can turn an enemy into a friend. You're your own worst enemy. Let not the flood water overthrow me, Lord nor let the deep swallow me up and let not the pit shut its mouth on me hear me O lord for your loving kindness is good turn to me according to the multitude of your tender mercies and do not hide your face from your servant for i am in trouble hear me speedily draw near to my soul and redeem it deliver me because of my enemies oh i love that i could go on but the lord says that he himself is a stranger and an alien. Can you imagine? <sighs> Out of our comfort zone. You know, that happens to us sometimes. Far from friends and relatives, we, we feel alone. But I'll tell you what, Jesus did that for us. And then some. What was the price he paid? That what he bore for me. A stranger, an alien, alone. He died on Calvary. A stranger to make me a friend. Oh, I love that. A stranger to make me a friend. An alien to give me a home. Great stranger, I fall at your feet. No longer from thee will I roam. Amen. Let me read that again. A stranger to make me a friend. An alien to give me a home. Great stranger, I fall at your feet. Jesus was lonely and endured loneliness so you wouldn't have to. Jesus was lonely and endured loneliness so you wouldn't have to. Jesus was rejected so you wouldn't be. Jesus was rejected so you wouldn't be. Jesus was an outcast 
so you and I could be gathered, so we wouldn't be outcast. He was comfortless, so we could be comforted. I just love that. Jesus called himself an alien and a stranger. That's Psalm 69. You can read the rest on your own. Okay, the next one is, I love this, just the king's son. The king's son. You know, respect and reverence just has, seems to have gone out these days. Kids are not respectful anymore. Um, and yet people make fools of themselves, do they not, over celebrities? People make fools of themselves over celebrities whose breath will fail, who are just worldly people. How little do our hearts discern the homage due to God or the respect due to God as King and to Jesus as his son. We bow our heads, we lift our hats, we pay our homage to the fleeting trifling stupid celebrities of this world <laughs> um, and give power to earth's great men and they're not really great but we do enter the house of god and we forget to be reverent we forget to be humble we forget to, to bow low before god lord help us our earthly thoughts hushed and earthly words stilled as we gather in the house of god you know, are we just so heavenly minded that we forget, um, and I'm sorry, getting it wrong. Are we so earthly minded that we don't see heavenly things? Are we so earthly minded, looking after the natural, looking at a person, maybe their status here on earth. How do we know that they're even going to be in heaven? Maybe they're going to be somewhere else suffering forever and ever. Learn to see the heart, learn to see heavenly things, learn to see beyond in the spiritual realm. That's where things really are. Train yourself to always think in light of eternity. What's eternal? This is all temporary. People are temporary, but just how we need to have our focus on heavenly things, the things of God, but to re respect and reverence the Lord. He's God. He made us. I love that. Um, Lord, teach us how to pray how to bow and how to truly worship you i love that the king's son okay another one. Oh, i love this what's the difference between heaven i mean i'm sorry hawaii and the desert what's the difference between hawaii and the desert rain water <laughs> the bible says in psalm 72 verse 6 he shall come down like rain upon the mown grass Jesus is our rain. Jesus is our water. My soul was parched with the fire of sin. My life mowed down with pain. My Savior spoke. My child draw near. His word was like the rain. Refreshing, cleansing, lifting me. My Lord, my all came down. And now I turn from all earth's dross to gain a heavenly crown. You know, what do you look like today? Do you look like Hawaii, lush, green, beautiful, attractive? Or are, do you look like the desert? You're parched, you're dried up. Again, are you thirsty, dried up and parched? He is the living water. I love that. He is the living water. Um, again, do you look like brown, ugly grass, <laughs> a barren wilderness? Or do people look on your a field and say, wow, it looks so refreshing. That is the Lord. Times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. Oh, I love that. And you know, when you sit before the Lord, when you read his word, you're getting watered. I don't know about you, but I know how to kill plants. I just can forget to water them. Thank God for fake plants. Don't tell anybody, right? Don't they look more real than real plants? I know real plants are great. If you can grow them, fantastic. But I kind of like my silk plants because I don't kill them. <laughs> anyway, just as you spend that time in the Word, you are getting watered. You are getting ministered to. You are getting nourished when you sit before the Lord. It's never a waste of time. If we could add up how much time we waste scrolling through Facebook or social media. It's so funny. My, my high school kids say, I don't like to read. And I said, listen, you read three books a day, whether you like it or not. Keep track of how much time you're on Facebook scrolling. They go, oh yeah, that's right, or whatever you watch. You, you, scroll, you read a lot and you don't even know it. But just the rain, is your soul watered today? He wants to water you. 
stay under the spout where the glory comes out. And I think I have time for one more. Um, another thing, another beauty secret. I don't care how much oil of Olay you put on your skin. In fact, that stuff I heard is not even good for you. Get get Dead Sea products. Get stuff from Israel. Anyway, um, I don't care how many cream you put on your face. If you're dehydrated, it will show on your skin. So the best beauty secret, drink, drink, drink lots of water. Okay. All right. Let's get through this one quickly. Showers upon the earth. Jesus, again, the Lord calls himself a shower. Do you love that? Psalm 72. We'll have to read that next time. Our lives grow dusty, dry, and desolate in our earthly pilgrimage. We're just pilgrims passing through. That's so good to know. <sighs> but he who seeks a love that is fresh and pure and strong comes down on us as the showers that water the earth. Have you turned to him today and found that cool, refreshing, cleansing, blessing which seeks to give have you ever just been on a hot hot day or just not been out all day not taking your water with you and you come home and you drink that water oh my gosh it's just so refreshing jesus is that thirst quencher i'll tell you what the world is like ever had a mouthful of salt water in the ocean it's like ugh, it makes you thirsty those poor sailors that had del got delusional that were so thirsty out on the ocean drank the salt water well, they died of thirst. Drinking salt water, you will die of thirst. That seems like an oxymoron, but um, it's not that refreshing, cleansing, nourishing water like the Lord is. Ah, oh, drink from him today. There will be showers of blessing. Oh, that today they might fall. Now as to God we're confessing. Now as on Jesus we call. Oh, I love that. You know, again, what are you drinking from? Do you need that, that waterfall? Of the of the Holy Spirit and what a picture I love of the Holy Spirit sadly we have just a little trickle sometimes God help us you know the Lord often reminded me whenever I would see Niagara Falls in a video or, or I visited there one time that water that was always flowing would a person ever wonder gee I wonder if we'll ever run out of water gee I wonder if we'll ever run out of water oh no you just keep your cup under Niagara Falls and you will have all the water you need you just keep close to the Lord you keep in the word you, you just keep a church if you've not been a church for a while get back to church you're you're needed there and they need you vice versa you you if a thumb is cut off from the body of from your body it will soon shrivel up you need your body parts connected how you need to be connected to people how you need the Word of God let me tell you something depression is linked to isolation you were made to be with other people and how much more the church as we are nearing the last days i don't know if you've had your head in the sand but the lord is coming soon the lord is at the door i think he's twisting the door now knob he's coming soon and we have to really wake up and make sure that as people pass by your life they go well, where do they go to church wow what are they reading or um what are they doing? It make your make other people thirsty because they see your lush, green life. And let the Lord water you today. I pray today if you're thirsty and dry, that you will just drink in that river of living water that never runs dry. God bless you.